Hi everyone, Byron Martin here at Logie's Greenhouses, and today we're going to be talking about a group of plants that make tremendous house plants. And these are the plants that are in the Gesneriaceae family, or Gesneriades. In that group, there are many, and some perform better in homes than others. And one of the real winners in that group are the Streptocarpus. And these are originally African understory plants in the jungles that have been hybridized for quite a long time to produce these very free flowering and bright colored blooms. And the good news is that they grow under low light being in the forest floor. And so they brought that into the ability to grow in the home. The only downside to it is, is they can't take really high heat. Grown outside in some parts of the country where it's getting up into the high 90s or even hundreds, they really would need to be in air conditioning. But other than that, they make great house plants throughout the year. Their blooming cycle is generally from spring going into fall, although without official light, they can be kept blooming all year round. And it's interesting that they have these long strap-like leaves and the flowers actually come out of the base of the leaf on these tall stems and they keep repeating that over a period of time. You can see the leaves here are light green and that's because in the greenhouses they've been grown under higher light so in deeper shade they, the leaves get actually darker. That also goes along with fertilizer which by the way, they're not heavy feeders. You've got to be careful. Over-fertilization can create damage, which you'll see uh, necrosis or, or browning in the intervenal areas of the leaf. The other name for them is Cape Primrose, which goes back to um, South Africa. Then we have another group of plants which are called syningas. These actually grow from bulbs or tubers that form under the ground. This is a hybrid that was made uh, probably about 20 years ago or so called Prudence Drizzly, and it is really a great bloomer. It never stops for us pretty much almost all year round. Dock of winter, it may slow down a little bit, but it is pretty much an ever bloomer. And with all these Jesneriads, we want to make sure that we bring the soil to visual dryness between waterings and not wet feet plants. They really like a little bit of dryness and can take quite a bit of dryness at times between their watering cycle. That keeps the roots healthy. Another syningia we have here is Bellata, which actually is very interesting with its textured leaves and its orange flowers. And large specimens of this can be quite showy. It does produce this very large cortex that over time, if you grow a specimen for many years, you get this kind of big, heavy bulb that sits out of the pot and, um, and then multiple leads come out of it. And again, it's another one of those easy growers. The Escananthus or lipstick family is quite large and we grow quite a few varieties of that. This is an example of an orange one which is, has really these sort of fluorescent orange-yellow blooms on it. This is hybrid Splendida, also called the orange lipstick plant, and they flower on the tips of this long growth here. This is just going into flower, it's a young plant, but you can make very large baskets out of these. And this is a crinkly leaf form of it, which is a radicans cultivar called Rasta, also has those beautiful lipstick-like flowers on it, but forms a very dense, curly habit to it. So it makes a great basket plant, but takes up a little bit less room than traditional Escananthus. And then of course, we don't grow many of these, but this is your African violet, and many of us know these as a traditional house plant. The St. Paulies are very easy to grow with neglect in low light and moderate to less amounts of water. They flower all the time and I know many people who grow them say the best thing you can do for them is a little bit of neglect and that is the dryness, the lower light that kind of squats them down and keeps them very tight. They call this as a rosette of leaves and the flowers come out of it and they flower pretty much all year round if grown properly. Then we have the colerias. These are terrestrial gesneriads. This one is longwoods, kind of an old cultivar but the good news about this one as opposed to others is this has a very rigid stem that comes up and it stays nice and straight and doesn't flop all over the place like so many of them do. And they actually have corms that are underneath the soil so they can go dormant and they sprout out of that. This one here we keep growing as an evergreen throughout the year. It's just budding up now, this young plant that's come out of propagation, but normally the flowering cycle is again from late winter through spring and then into fall where it quiets down a bit as the days shorten. And lastly here we have the Nematanthus. So this particular variety, Christmas holly, also known as the goldfish plant, is an old house plant. It's been around for many years, 
People have had great success with it because it has that ability to withstand the stress of the house. And that is your low humidity and your forgetful watering and limited light. As far as fertilization goes, I did mention the streps are sensitive to it, but again, you're growing under low light. And under low light conditions, you just want to reduce your feed. I would say probably once a month, maybe give them some liquid feed in your water during the summertime and in the wintertime, just back off of it and let them go through their winter rest. They do have susceptibility to mealybug, which usually is a problem that is contracted from somewhere. They do have thrip problems, which can get into the flowers, but also can scar the leaves. And occasionally we see aphids on the flowers. It's not very often, but sometimes we do see that in the um, late spring. Also, we like to grow these, for the most part, about 60 degrees. There are some exceptions to that. The streps can take it colder. The nematanthus can take it colder. The cholerias would really object to that. African violets would object to it. And escenanthus actually can take it cooler, but I'd prefer to keep them above 60. And one other thing is cold water on the leaves in sunlight, which can happen, will stain their leaves. So for that, we do in the greenhouses, we come in and the first thing we do in the morning is we water them with warm water. If it's dark, you can water them with cold water and it doesn't create that staining. It does no harm, but it is unsightly when you have to look at these blotched leaves that are all over your plant. As far as the streps go, we have this one, which is called roulette cherry. This is a hybrid out of Poland called Pola. We have a variety called full moon. And we have this variety, which is called purple panda. The many varieties that we grow, these are some of the color forms. And there's a lot of breeding being done and has been done. So the colors are actually exploding in terms of the flowers that we see. Well, thanks for watching. Gersneriads are great plants to grow in the home. If you have other questions, visit us at lowgs.com.